Welcome back to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy here with five-time NBA champ Derek Fisher. Derek, I want to talk to you for a moment about your daughter and this moment in 2007 when she had to have eye surgery. And you were in New York with her, and then you went and you made it back to the game, and you actually checked into the game. You went right into it. I mean, that has got to be one of the most mind-blowing experiences for you to go through for sure. all in one day. Yeah. That day, I mean, I remember almost every second of it. Um, yeah, when you talk about the range of emotions to go from earlier in the day, uh, watching the, the doctors and nurses roll your 10-month-old daughter away, going into an operating room, not knowing what the other side looks like. Is she going to be okay? Is she going to survive this, et cetera? Um, to then her surgery going well in the recovery room, still giving it some time to being on a plane back to Salt Lake City, which was the plan anyway, um, to then landing and realizing all of these things that had gone down as far as uh, D. Brown, who was the backup point guard because I was away, had gotten, he had broken his, not broken his neck, but he had injured his neck sure. really bad. He had to go to the hospital um, and the team kind of needed me. So it, it was just weird, like, and so, a quick discussion with my wife at the time and you know she was like if if you want you know to go I you have my permission to go mm -hmm. um so jump in the car police is like escorting me to the arena is going crazy I walk in the building it's the third quarter I threw my uniform on and did some jumping jacks basically for like three minutes <laughs> get warm and then I walk out of the tunnel and that night they had given out these light blue t-shirts to everybody in the stands and it was almost like no cliche like walking into heaven in terms of like the blue that was everywhere it was like the sky just kind of opened up as I walk in and before I could even think about it Jerry Sloan's like all right fish <laughs> go to the table and that was probably the best thing that could have happened had I sat down and started to think about what all had happened I probably would not have been able to play very well and it's back and forth. The Warriors are kind of taking control. And I went to our assistant coach at the time, uh, Tyrone Corbin. And I was like, look, Ty, I, I don't know if I could make a shot or not, but Barry Davis is killing us. Jason Richardson is killing us. One thing I know I can do is play some defense. Okay. So tell Jerry to put me back in, man, like so I can help. And that was what led to him putting me back in in the fourth quarter oh. for defensive purposes. <laughs> And that's what then kind of led to, you know, me making the shot later, but, um, wow. you know. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no one really knows that. Uh -uh. Did that whole experience, the kind of like walking into heaven and going in for defense, did that change the way you thought about basketball after that yeah, night? Yeah, that entire experience, you know, from the time that she was diagnosed in May of 07 um, to that game that night and everything that has happened since then, um, has changed my perspective on life, on basketball. I think it put basketball in its proper place, mm -hmm. you know, where it had always been something that, um, where I felt invincible and that, you know, as long as you work hard and you put your time in, everything's gonna work out. And all of a sudden you see your kid on his operating table and you're helpless, you can't do anything. Yeah. And so there was this control that I had to learn how to start giving up after that experience. Uh, that I think made me a better basketball player, maybe a better person, not a perfect person, but a better person. So when I ended up, we moved back to LA in the summer and I rejoined the Lakers, like I was a different version of myself um, because basketball was this thing that I could love again and just be passionate about and smile and have fun as opposed to like, oh my gosh, you, we lost, you missed a shot, you know, we didn't win the championship. Yeah, that hurts. Um, but nothing hurts more than seeing your child, you know, in someone else's hands uh, in, a, in a tough medical situation. So she's 11 now. 12. She's yeah, 12. 12. How's she doing? Yeah, she's doing great. Yeah. You would never know. I do think there, probably like for anyone, there are some impacts that chemotherapy just has. I think on the body, on the system, emotionally, etc. So. She has some things that she has to deal with, but you just, when you look at her, you just never know that she's been through that experience. So then she also reminds me of like, before she could even walk, you know what I mean? Like she fought and stood yeah. up for herself and beat cancer. So 
You know what I mean? Like the stuff that you're going through, bro, getting fired from your job or, you know, you have an, uh, an, an accident that for me, I never wanted to be in that position. I never saw myself being a guy that, you know, would have a car accident driving under the influence. But as down as you feel when you see, you know, you see Tatum and you see what other people battle in life, it's just not that big of a deal, yeah. you know? And so I just always try to remember those things, be thankful, be grateful. And, um, you know, so much more life left to live, but we have to be present and in the moment in yes. order to enjoy it. So that's what I'm trying to do 